Hello physics students. We're going to do a conservation of momentum problem today that deals with energy and energy losses. The problem setup is pretty simple. We have a, a movie production and there are these two vehicles that are going to have a head-on collision here. And So I've got a large vehicle that's moving at a known velocity and I have a smaller vehicle that has a known velocity as well. If we go through and look at this what we're asked to find is how much energy was lost in the collision. And now I'm implying here how much energy is no longer kinetic energy after the collision. Which brings up this principle that's so important I really wanted to write it down here in the problem statement. Momentum is always conserved. There's no way to get around that. There will be one defined velocity that these two things can have after they collide because of this statement that is right here that says the two vehicles are going to stick together after the collision and move off with a shared velocity. We will find that through conservation of momentum because momentum is always conserved. But now, kinetic energy is not conserved in an inelastic collision, and this is an inelastic collision because they're sticking together. So just to be clear, energy is always conserved, at least as long as we are not dealing with the mass side of things in nuclear physics. But that aside for a moment, energy is always conserved. What happens is it transfers from one type of energy to another type of energy. In this problem, we're going to assume that both of these vehicles, we're going to call this vehicle 1 and we'll call this vehicle 2, they're both going to have a very definable kinetic energy to begin with. And then after the collision, you could picture this happening, a lot of that energy would be lost. We will find that we will still have some kinetic energy left over, but you will lose a lot of the energy, and that's what I'm asking us to find. It's going to go into things like sound and heat, a lot of thermal energy, crumpling up bumpers, those sorts of things. That takes a lot of energy. So let's go ahead and begin with conservation of momentum, though. The first thing I want to remind you of is the idea that in this equation there are two vectors. You have momentum as a vector, that's the P, and you have velocity as a vector. I'm going to go ahead and define this as the positive direction to the right which means this number right here, I have to be very careful, it's actually going to become a negative 26 meters per second when I go through my calculations. So we are going to conserve momentum and that's going to be interesting for us to look at before and after the collision. So I'm going to add up the momentum of my system. My system is the two vehicles. Both of them are in the single system. And again, I have my vehicle 1 and vehicle 2. So I'm going to say P1 plus P2 is equal to P1 plus P2. That's just it being conserved. If I break that out into more interesting stuff, it's going to be M1 V1 plus M2 V2 is equal to M1 V1 plus M2 V2. But I can simplify this because this V here and that V there are going to be the same. I will call it just a generic V with no subscript on it. That's going to be that shared velocity. And then I'm going to factor it out and then put those M terms in parentheses. And so it's going to look like this. M1 V1 plus M2 V2 is going to be equal to M1 plus M2 times that shared V. That's my equation. I'm in meters per second, meters per second on both those Vs. I'm in kilograms and kilograms on both of my vehicles. I have my unit agreement. I'm going to go ahead and leave them out just for room on the calculation. M1 is the bigger vehicle, so I'm going to say 2300 zero, zero, times its velocity was 22 meters per second plus 780 kilograms multiplied by negative 26 meters per second is going to be equal to 2300, zero, zero, that's M1 plus 780 times this unknown V. I'm finding that because I'm going to need to know that V when it comes to me talking about the energy. You can see that this is just a number here, a number there. 
So the left side of the equation is 30,320. That would have momentum units, so kilogram meters per second. I'll add that in for a moment here. Meters per second divided by the combined mass, that's 3,080 kilograms. You can see kilogram cancels, and, and I am left with my meters per second. So this V, which I'm actually going to write over here, is going to be equal to 9.84 meters per second. That is that shared velocity. This is the after velocity. And I'm just going to keep it there for my bookkeeping. You can see that it's a positive number. That means the bigger vehicle won. That vehicle was traveling in the plus direction, and it's still traveling in the plus direction. So that's not very surprising that the bigger vehicle won in this case. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to calculate the kinetic energy before. So the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. It is not a vector. So all of my values are going to be positive numbers. This has a positive Ke even though it's traveling to the left and this has a positive Ke even though it's traveling to the right. It's going to be the Ke of 1 plus the Ke of 2. It's going to be one half. The mass is going to be two three zero zero kilograms times twenty two meters per second squared. Remember, this is the before the collision situation. Plus one half the smaller mass times its velocity squared. So before I have this pretty huge number, eight hundred and twenty thousand two hundred and forty joules of kinetic energy. Then after the collision, I still have Ke1 plus Ke2, so I'm just dealing with my kinetic energy. Plus, there's some sort of losses. So I'll say the lost energy. Since these two are moving with a shared velocity, I'm going to just treat it as a combined mass. So you're going to see me go 1 half, 2, 3, 0, 0 plus 780. So again, just the combined mass. And now that shared velocity was 9.84 meters per second squared plus the lost energy. So this is 149111 joules plus lost. And now I just go with a little bit of pretty simple arithmetic here. And I say the before must be equal to the after now that I'm including my lost term here. So before I had 820,240 joules, that's got to be equal to my 149,111 joules that's still tied up in kinetic energy plus the lost. And I just do that subtraction and I find that the lost energy here is equal to 671,129 if I don't really round until the end there. Joules. And that is my final answer. So you can see that if this is the amount I started with, and if I had 82 parts before to the 67 parts I have now, I lost around like 80% of the energy in that collision. And again, that would probably ultimately end up as thermal energy. Hopefully that problem made sense to you, and if it did, you should let your computer know.